All right, I just got done solving day four. Um, I actually recorded a live video, but I accidentally deleted it, which is quite unfortunate. But um, here's how I solved it anyways. So day four is pretty easy. We're given a range of numbers. So my range is this one right here. And we're given a couple criteria to find a password within that range of numbers. Um, the first criteria is that it's six digits. Well, all of my inputs are six digits, so I don't even have to worry about that one. Then I have, it's within the range of your input. Yeah, okay. Um, also don't have to worry about that one because I'm gonna use the range to calculate this. Two addition digits are the same. So in this example, we have two, two. Um, and going from left to right, the digits never decrease. They only ever increase or stay the same. So that's all there is to this one. This one's more straightforward, I'd say. Um, so start is gonna be this and it's gonna be this. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to find the list of possible, which we're going to use do syntax to do. And then we're going to print the length of what's possible. So we're going to have some value, which comes from the range start to end. And then I'm going to import control monad guard. And there's really only two roles that we care about. So we have two adjacent for B and um, not decrease for B. And if that's true, we can say pure B to get the value back. So how do we do two adjacent? Well, I ended up doing it like this. Um, basically I said, go show where go is um, so, so show is going to convert to a string and then go will process over that string but basically if we get an x and a y and some other values we want x to equal y or we recurse and we want y to equal head of the rest so we're trying to just find the element the two elements that are equal there otherwise false um, if we get to a single element or we get to empty, that means we did not find our pair. Okay, now the other one is not decrease. And if I did it like this, I would have been really fast. Um, but anyways, so this is an and, because we never want this to be true. We never, we always want x to be less than or equal to y. Um, there's one other weird case here, which is if we have a singleton list, well, that's actually true, because if we just have one element, it means we never found a decrease and we got to the end of the list. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's run this. And our answer comes out to be 1790, which is the correct answer for part one. Now in part two, it's a little trickier, not too tricky though, but basically we're told that there must be a pair of two and they must not be a part of a larger group. So for example, in this one, it doesn't work because four is part of a group of three values. This one works because we have a pair of two, so there has to exist um, a pair. So basically what we can do to solve this is I remembered Haskell has a nice function data dot list um, group. And basically what group does is it transforms a list of values to a list of groupings and the groupings are adjacent it's not grouped just anywhere in the list it's adjacent values so it's super super useful um, but basically what we can do is we can say exactly two adjacent and what we can do is we can actually just do um, this so we can show and then we can group and then we can map length. So make groupings and find their lengths. And then we can make sure two is an element of the lengths. If we run it, we get back this, which is the correct answer. So day four is a lot of fun, real easy, kind of a nice little break. Not that the last ones have been particularly um, crushingly hard, but still nice little problem.